fans have been on the edge of their seats since the season one cliffhanger. How early on did the writers let you know what was ahead for your character and how excited were you to dive into all of his different layers in season two? You know, what's funny uh, is that they didn't even tell me he was in the car. So we had to <laughs> wait. They didn't put anybody in the cast. They didn't trust anybody at all. They didn't want us to fool Tom Holland or anything. So they literally made us wait like two years or like more like a year and a half until we could actually know. So I mean, it was as big as a mystery for us as everybody else. So we were kind of coming up with theories ourselves and trying to figure that out. Um, so it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, they didn't tell us anything. Um, and but I, every and they, you know what's funny too is that they teased us. That's another thing. <laughs> they would like throw little hints at us and mess with us. It's like, come on, just you can just text me. You know, let me know. But yeah, they they wouldn't tell us anything, man. So it was it was a long year and a half waiting for it and. And also to see what they're going to do with your character. You know, you never yeah. know what they're going to do with it. And of course, I get in a car crash. We, everybody knew that for a fact. So I'm wondering, what is my condition like? What are they going to do with me? So it was uh, it was pretty wild, man. It was a very interesting year and a half. You do such a brilliant job displaying all of the emotions that Kyle is going through in season one, especially in season two. For you as an actor, how did you prepare for those more emotional moments? Yeah, um, a lot of it, I mean, it really varies from, you know, scene to scene. Um, but I think a big part of it is who your scene partner is. If you do have a scene partner in that scene, um, you really feed off of each other. So uh, you really have to communicate with them, make sure you're on the same page. So you're not dragging down their performance or they're not dragging down your performance. That's very important. So, um, you know, I think I think really your scene partner really carries that. Now, if you're by yourself, um, it's definitely something to where I like if it's a super emotional scene, I kind of have to block everybody out and I kind of feel bad doing that because, you know, there's like 100 people around you working, putting up lights and the camera and all that. But when you're especially by yourself because you're you're by yourself in the scene anyway, so you kind of have to get into character for that. Um, I definitely kind of dive deep into it and I'm not even mentally myself anymore. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm mentally Kyle and whatever he's dealing with. And it's so, so specific because you have to dive into not only what he's feeling in this moment, but why he's feeling that, what led up to that moment, you know what I mean? All these different things that, that he's, that he's feeling. And uh, so it's, it's, that's what's so much fun though. I love doing emotional scenes because you have so many things to explore and dive into. So um, it, like I said, it's like mainly you do emotional scenes with other people. And when you do, it's definitely about, you know, being on the same page and about teamwork. And one of the big storylines for Kyle this season centers around his mental health and removing the stigma around seeing a therapist. What was your reaction when the writers told you that's where his storyline was heading? And did that bring any pressure just given how important that story is to bring to life? Yeah, you know, man, uh, it was interesting. You know, they just beat Kyle eyes down all the time. It's like, <laughs> man, Kyle just can't be happy. You know, it's just like they always have to make him depressed. Um, but no, he, it was it was so much fun to play a character who's you know, traumatized and he has his guilt and there's just, there's these, all these emotions that are just on top of him. So, you know, I mean, you see how broken he is early on and, uh, and, you know, it starts to not only affect him, but everybody around him. And it's, it's so, so deep. And uh, at first I was like, you know, I, I was, I was a little excited, but a little, a little hesitant as well. And then I, I finally read the script and I was like, man, they wrote it so well. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited. Or I was at that time to jump into to the adventure of, you know, Kyle's journey. And uh, I was really excited for it. And uh, it, I mean, it was definitely, you know, there was some pressure, I think, for sure. I think a lot of the pressure came, though, from the fan base that it has now. With season one, we didn't really have any expectations. You know what I mean? There was no fans, you know, or fan base. But now with season two, I mean, they were following, you know, BTS photos throughout the whole season. You were seeing edits all the time. You know, they kept DMing you. Every little picture you took, they would analyze it. So it was, <laughs> it was definitely like, you know, um, a different experience and and I, I was there was definitely expectations there that I felt like I had to you know um accomplish and and uh and um and kind of you know do justice so it was definitely a little 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 you know anxious at times and uh and uh I had a little anxiety but I think once we got in the flow of things it just felt like season one and like that's something I worried about too is is what COVID would be like because season one we didn't film during COVID and then season two mm. we did it was my first project filming in COVID. So I didn't know what to expect with any of that, but it was pretty much the same cast and crew. And like I said, those first few days were kind of weird. You know, we couldn't have lunch all together. We had to go back to our trailers to limit the, you know, contact and exposure, which was weird. But after that, I mean, it was just, we kind of got back into the flow of things and it felt like it was season one. Yeah, there's so many beautiful relationships that unfold throughout the series. Which of Kyle's has been your favorite to explore? And has that changed from season one heading into season two? 
definitely has changed because I think in season two, he branches out and goes to different people, which is really fun because I love, I mean, this cast is so big, like it's huge. Yeah. And, you know, I, with season one, I didn't get to work with everybody or at least work with them enough, you know? So season one, I think obviously with Noreen, that was a great relationship because they both didn't have anybody. They're both going through tremendous struggles and they needed somebody and they found each other, which was really sweet. And, uh, and doing scenes with, with Jamie Lynn was, was great for season one. And then I think only had a couple scenes with her in season two, but one relationship that I really liked in season two was with uh, Cal, with Justin Bruni. Now, Cal, let me tell you something about Justin. He is one of the coolest, most laid back, funny guys ever, but he's like effortlessly funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, like he doesn't try at all. He's just, he's just hilarious. He's, he's so cool. Um, and I only, I think only had like two scenes with him in season one. So being able to actually know him better and, and, you know, get to know about him and his family, where he came from, um, you know, he says that I'm like a, a mini him uh, when he was younger. So that, that's always fun. And, and just being able to, to talk with them and getting to know that guy, he, he was great. And every scene we did, um, it was it was a blast and, and we really had a good time. So uh, definitely season two, I really enjoy doing the scenes with Justin. Yeah, and you're talking about the fan base earlier. You know, this series has been so incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences? That's a really good question. You got me there. Uh, let's see. Um, I think one thing that I love about this show, and I think everybody else loves about it, and I'm sure you do too, is there's so many life lessons in it. You know what I mean? You actually learn a lot of stuff when you're watching it, and, there, and there's always something new. And um, and because there's so many different characters, they go through so many different experiences. And have different backgrounds so you you and you you get educated i mean you you learn a lot you um but i think there's a lot of life lessons really that um about friends family community relationships friendships that i think have really helped me in life and and i, I get messages and dms from all you know all, all types of fans and they're like man you know this moment right here changed my life or this moment right here you know made me reconnect with you know a friend of mine or a family member that i haven't talked to in 10 15 years and like being able to actually know that we had an impact on somebody like that it's insane and uh, you know it's very surreal and i'm so glad that we're able to help people and people i think use this show as as some kind of outlet you know or something to go to when they're down and it brings yeah. them up and and being able to have that impact on somebody it's it's amazing and i've talked with i mean the cast and, and the crew about that and they all feel the same way and being you know it, that's why i love my job is that we have these the, this this big impact on people that um, that I wouldn't really be able to have if I didn't, you know, pursue this business or industry. So it, it's great, man. I love interacting with the fans and, and seeing them in public, you know, that's always fun too. And just to see the people that I'm, I'm actually impacting in person is, is always great. Great answer. And, you know, would it be a season of Sweet Magnolias if it didn't end with a huge reveal? What was, without giving any spoilers, how did yeah. you, uh, what was your reaction when you read the reveal and how do you think that'll affect Kyle moving forward? Man, uh, you know, it was it was interesting. Uh, I remember we we did a table read, but it was virtual. So it was through Zoom. And I remember we were all, you know, reading the script together. That's what a table read is for everybody that doesn't know. It's like where you read uh, the script together for the episode with the other cast um, and the rest of the cast. And I remember we were all reading it and like we all didn't know what the heck was happening. Like it was crazy. It's action packed. It comes out of left field. You'll know what's happening, but that's what makes it so much fun. And uh, I think it's going to affect Kyle in a lot of different ways. There's multiple people involved. There's people very close to him involved with it. Um, and you know what? You know what's kind of messed up too is he's happy too. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's finally starting to kind of get in the groove of things toward the end of the season. And of course that happens. So it's like, oh, okay, great. The writers just, you know, once again, got to, you know, make him mad, make him sad. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it was great, man. And, um, and, and they played it out so well. The scene was incredible. And I mean, this is shots, the acting, the, the lighting, everything was so great. But I mean, you know, we had to leave you guys on a cliffhanger because you've got to get a season three. You know what I mean? We've got to, got, got to bring you guys back and, and, uh, and immerse yourself into it. And that's the reason it was so confusing. You know what I mean? And season three, we'll explain it. You know, we'll get to the details on why, what's going on, what happens next. But and, and you know what? There's actually more than one cliffhanger. There's a couple at the end actually yeah, yeah. there's there, there's a, there's a couple different things that go on so uh if you haven't seen the last episode yet be ready because uh, it's a little chaotic yeah, that's a perfect second to this next question but if we're lucky enough to get a season three where do you want to see kyle's storyline head it's a great question man um let's see i think i want to work with as much as the cast as i can and i feel like i haven't worked with dana sue a lot who's yeah. brooke elliott she's amazing i mean super super talented um from the you know i, I think of all, i've done two scenes with her i think 
in the whole show, which is crazy. Um, so I really want to work with her more because every time I have, she's just so funny. She's, she's so nice and so talented. So I really want to work with Brooke again, or Brooke a little bit, Heather Headley. I want to work with her as Helen. Um, she, her character is my favorite character. I love her so much. Same. She has this like, this like cockiness, but confidence about her. And I love that so much. She does such a good job as Helen, but, um, but I want to work with Heather and, uh, and work with her a little bit. I haven't been able to, uh, to dive into that relationship. And, um, yeah, I mean, just, just as many people as I can, you know, I love working with new people because, you know, everybody has their own experiences, how they got into the business, you know, what their techniques are and stuff like that. So I love working with different people and kind of getting their insight on different things. And same thing goes for directors. Uh, we had four directors this season or three, I think four, maybe four. Um, I don't know exactly, but they like to bring in different people and, and with the show and kind of give, you know, um, uh, different people opportunities. So I got to work with a bunch of different people and, and they all had totally different backgrounds and different experiences. So it was so much fun to kind of learn things from them and, uh, and hopefully apply it to my career later on, because I eventually do want to kind of explore directing and, and that kind of side of the acting industry too. But, uh, but yeah, it's always fun to, to meet new people and learn new things. And there's such a great chemistry that comes off the screen between you and the rest of the cast. How were you all able to build that uh, in season one? And then has it changed going into season two? Yeah, man, I, I don't even know. I, uh, you know, everybody is kind of clicks. I mean, especially the three main ladies, uh, their margarita yeah. nights they have. They it's, it's so real. Like it's insane. It's like, you're just, you're, you're just inside of this house with these three best friends that have known each other their whole life. And they're just having a conversation. It's like, it's insane. And, um, and yeah, I think a lot of the chemistry really has to, I don't know what it has to do with, to be honest. I mean, we just all get along so well. Um, uh, with me, Carson, and Annalise, uh, that's Kyle, Ty, and, uh, and Annie, uh, we have a little friendship thing going on. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I relate to them separately in different ways. So I think we're able to feed off of that. You know, we kind of have some, some of the same experiences. Carson lives in Florida. So that's one thing that we've really been able to, uh, to uh, relate on because I live in Florida as well. So it's been nice. And uh, so um, Annalise, uh, her mom is a teacher and stuff like that. So we kind of have, you know, some similarities and my mom's a teacher as well. So, you know, it, it's been really great to talk to them and get to know them. I feel like what's great about this show is that it gives us time to, because, you know, we go out a few weeks before filming. So we're able to meet with everybody and get to, you know, introduce ourselves and get to know each other before we start filming, which is always huge. And, uh, and obviously it helps when everybody is just so talented. I mean, it's such a talented cast and they do such a good job and makes my life a lot easier when you have a, a cast or a scene partner where they actually, you know, uh, are incredible, um, you know, because you once again, we kind of talked about that earlier, you kind of feed off of each other. So that's very important. Um, but yeah, uh, and, and kind of to your second part, you know, I, I was kind of scared, like I said, with COVID coming back, but everybody just got along so well. And I mean, it, it's there's not a lot of sets where the cast and the crew has the relationship and chemistry that see, that Sweet Magnolias has, season one and season two. And we had new people coming in, new characters, yeah. new crew members, but we just got along so well and everybody was so nice. And it's just like, it's a show that once you kind of get into the flow of things, you really start going and the momentum starts carrying your way through. So those first few weeks are really about creating that momentum. And then after that, those next, you know, four months or whatever, you're just, you're cruising and having fun. Yeah. I got one final question for you. And you touched upon this already a little bit earlier, but as you look ahead to the rest of your, your career in the next five, 10 years, what do you hope to accomplish? Do you have a dream role that you would love to play? Yeah. Uh, let's see. You're coming with the deep questions. I like you. I, I got you, Kevin. Uh, so yeah, I think, where I want to see myself is obviously in the acting industry. I want to keep pushing this in my career. I, I want to expand to different roles. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to play a bully in the new stranger things season, which is really cool. fun. So that's way different than the sensitive Kyle that we know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I love playing different characters. So hopefully I get to dive into some different, you know, genres and different stuff. I want to do like a comedy film. I think that'd be fun. I'm a huge horror fan. So I love to do a horror movie. That'd be awesome. And uh, eventually kind of dive into the directing side of things. I think that'd be fun, but I, I want to kind of, you know, cement myself with acting first and then kind of explore the different um, ways of the industry. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of where I see myself. I just want to keep going and, and hopefully uh, keep throwing these projects out and hopefully we'll be at like what season six of Sweet Magnolias <laughs> by then we'll see.